Ding, 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 ding. Welcome back to the Jen and Jillian podcast. This week we're banging on things. Bam, 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 bam. Mama's on the table. He doesn't like that. He's fine with it. He's just curious. This episode is brought to you by Stitch Fix. Guys, is shopping for clothes a hassle? Rhetorical question. It is a hassle. I know firsthand because I'm a human being who has shopped for clothes. It sucks. Stitch Fix is here to solve that problem. Basically, it is a service where a personal stylist will handpick items and send it right to your door. And all you got to do is go on their website and fill out some questions, answer some style questions, and they hook you up. It is awesome. Their styling fee is only $20, which is applied toward anything you keep from your shipment. So get started right now when you go to stitchfix.com slash Jen and Julian. You'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. Check it out. Super cool service. I actually just submitted for my first box. It didn't get here in time for this episode. It's coming next week. Wow. So it could be posted. I want to see what you got, BB. I'm interested. (laughs) I don't know what they sent me, but hopefully it's good. Uh, Also, guys, HoneyBook... If you are a graphic designer or a photographer, HoneyBook is helping you spend less time with the business and boring side of, of your business and uh, and leaving you with more time to spend on the creative, which is what you want to do, right? You don't want no one wants to deal with the paperwork and the business. So HoneyBook is here to help you with that. Payment is flexible. Use code Jenna Julian. You get 50% off monthly or annually. That's $20 a month or $200 a whole year of organization of your calendar management tools, branded brochure, uh, brochures, proposals, contracts, all the stuff you don't want to deal with. HoneyBook does it for you. Uh, go to honeybook.com and use promo code Jenna Julian to get started. More on that later. Thank you, sponsors. Well, let's just jump into it. <laughs> let's just jump into it. That was so funny. Somebody tweeted, let's just jump. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite memes. Let's just jump. Let's just cross out into it. Well, we're going to jump into this one. It's a trend that's been going around on YouTube. They're fun to watch. I like them. I have seen them. I haven't. I've admittedly not watched any of them, mm-hmm. but I I can kind of get the gist. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty funny idea. Basically, you ask your audience uh, what their assumptions of you are, and then you go over them and read them. Yeah. So that's what we're gonna do, and we have Some a lot. Some y'all are trolling. Some of y'all are serious. There's a good mix. There's a good mix of trolls. Some of them are going right for the jugular. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I guess we should just get right right into it. I tweeted it out. We did it on Instagram. Uh, Basically, on Instagram, you can do it um, so anonymously, so so it's not public what people are writing. Mm. So that's why Instagram is preferred. But we did a few on Twitter anyway. So we have Twitter, Instagram. We have a bunch um are you ready yeah i'm ready sure okay. why not grace says y'all are definitely just friends and are finally starting to tell the truth <laughs> no, no. well you are my friends but no friend zoned that is a very funny assumption especially since last week um the podcast and in my video that that's when the joke started the joke is only like what a week old that we're just friends yeah because like i friend zoned you in my video yeah Friend zone hard after six years of being in a relationship. <laughs> Definitely in the friend zone. Yeah. No, nope, we're not friends. It's just a joke. It'll be gone by next week. Don't worry. <laughs> there will be something else to replace it. Uh, Rai Rai says, you plan on slowly retreating from society and living in a tropical paradise of your own making. Honestly, that's like, yeah, I mean, that sounds nice. It's kind of your dream. You've you've said that's your dream for a while to go live on a farm somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, it would. It probably wouldn't be a tropical paradise. It would be uh, somewhere where I can chill and have a lot of animals. Nothing against tropical paradises, but no, yeah. everything against tro- tropical paradises. I don't know. You know, I'm from like upstate New York. I I feel like if I were to ever be like, okay, I'm gonna go be a recluse for the rest of my life, it would probably be somewhere in the United States that, you know, was just had seasons. I'm way too, (laughs) I feel like I'm too easily bored to be, (laughs) to be completely isolated from other people completely. Like, oh, you wouldn't be isolated from other people, but. So like in this scenario, I think they're saying society as like, you're no longer on the internet or like a public person. So that's like a, no. 
you sort of just go. I've always thought about this though, because like in Breaking Bad, they have this this guy. Spoiler alert: they have this guy. I'm getting spoiled. Who's a vacuum cleaner salesman? But basically, what he does is he wipes your identity and he gives you a new one, and he sends you somewhere completely off the grid. Whoa, like witness protection? Yeah, but it's like it's underground witness protection to Whoa. where the government's not involved. It's just third Whoa. party. But I've thought about that. Like, what would that be? That's really interesting to think about. Yeah, like, if you got wild. if you got a new ID. Jane Armstrong, and you live in Wisconsin, and you have to go there and change the way you look a little bit, and not really talk to anyone for a while, and stay the fuck off the internet, that's and wild. you're a different person. Like that's a crazy thought yeah, to think wild. about. So no, no I don't plan on doing that though. No, there's no actual plans to do it, but like I don't know for if in many 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 years, if like that was a thing that happened, I, that wouldn't be so bad to me. That would. I feel like there are worse end games than that. <laughs> It's right, pretty, it's pretty straightforward end game. <laughs> yeah, like if sh- if shit hits the fan, being, right? Being just like a regular person. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> not like, bad. But like far removed, far removed, yeah. and maybe under a different name. Yeah, but there's plenty of people in this country that live their lives that way and are so happy and fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's really beautiful. So I agree. I don't. I think it would happen much slower than anyone would ever care about. You yeah, know? I mean, we just bought a house. Yeah, I'd be like older and no one would give a fuck yeah end game <laughs> yeah no one gives a fuck yeah. yeah i'll always give a fuck friend oh <laughs> <laughs> i'll always give a fuck about you friend friends best friends <laughs> emma says julian showers in a wetsuit oh my god <laughs> that's really funny that's a troll i've worn a wetsuit probably like three times in my life twice when i tried surfing and just wasn't for me and then a third i think when i was wakeboarding maybe once that is one of the most miserable things to get in and out of i don't, I, think, I don't know I'm if you've ever I've done ever it worn one. Oh my god surfers who do it every morning who get inside mostly getting out of it mm. putting it on is not that bad getting out of it it's like wet it's cold it's tight everywhere yeah. and you have to, you really have to like get your get your way out of it with your shoulders like that was the my nightmare yeah you're not very flexible in your shoulders. my shoulders are pretty tight they're not flexible so sometimes <laughs> i'll struggle to get like a jacket off <laughs> or on so i've been witness to that many times i will assure you i do not shower in a wetsuit what's the point of showering if you're wearing a wetsuit <laughs> i don't know to protect How do you yourself get clean well, as long as the wetsuit's clean, you're clean, supposedly. Okay. Is that a thing? That but that's not a thing. No one actually does that at home. No. I mean, if you're showering on the beach after surfing, yeah, shower in a wetsuit. But even then, no, you don't shower in a wetsuit. What is that thing? Was that on Shark Tank where it's like a shower buddy where you? Yeah, wrap? It's, it's pretty cool looking. It was cool. It's they were comparing it to a garbage bag where you can like loop it over your head and it's like a portable little. You can get undressed and wash yourself. It's kind of cool. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Yeah. I don't surf or go out in public, so it's not for me, but it's cool. <laughs> okay. Jenna, you have an innate urge to mother any living thing from Soupy Saiyan. Probably. I I'm mean, trying to I'm trying to think of something that I haven't had the urge to like care for. If it comes my way, then yeah. But like if it's a spider, no, I don't have an innate urge to mother a spider. You know? Okay, so sans insects. Yeah, pro- well, some insects are like super cool and I'm like actually down with, but most yeah. of them are not your house pests or they're pets. You, they're pests, right? Like you're, you don't want them in the house. Like cockroach. Yeah, if I was like, okay, Julian, all the bugs that are here are now my babies. Like that's not safe for the dogs. That's not safe for us. That's not a good idea. But yeah, I, you know. Anything that comes my way, like any dog that shows up here, which happens more than... <laughs> you have that instinct, hardcore. Yeah. Plants, yeah, I'm down. Hardcore. Any mammal, it, absolutely. Some reptiles, some insects. Like, have you seen the praying mantis people on YouTube that have them as pets? They're, like, so cool. No, I have not fallen down the praying mantis people hole yet There's, on YouTube. Well, one of my favorite videos is called Mantis Squad, and they're all just standing there like with their arms up, and they're just like doing this. <laughs> what a cool mannerism for an insect to have. They're amazing, yeah. and we see them outside around us sometimes, and they are just like... They're really cool. 
So stunning. Like, yeah, if if I found an injured praying mantis, yeah, I would try and take care of it. Yeah. Because he's like a, he's a special insect, you know? Mm-hmm. But and We also went to uh, animal tracks that, like, uh, animal farm sanctuary place uh, where they care for animals that, like, people improperly tried to have as pets. And we learned about, um, what was the animal that Kermit dragged out of the bush that one time? Possum. Possum. We learned about possums. We got to meet one. And we learned that they were like actually really not that like bad. And no, like, they're totally not They're not bad. like disease. They don't carry diseases like a lot of people think. Well, I mean, if it bit your dog, you'd probably want to take them to go get yeah, checked out. Yeah, but like people's images a rabies shot. Of, uh, of, of one of those is just like foaming at the mouth and crazy and like, you know. Well, like, they're just like any other animal. Yeah. Like when I was sitting outside the other night and a raccoon walked up to me and I, and I just looked at him and I go, you can't be here. <laughs> you just like, had a calm conversation. They, they don't, they don't want to like attack you. Yeah. If, if they were rabid or something, you'd be able to tell if they're mm-hmm. sick. You know, you'd yeah. see them during the daytime or whatever. But yeah, no, if, if I found any mammal, if I found them injured, I would try and do something mm-hmm. because it's, it's a mammal. You're like, you know, you can have a little connection or understanding like a furry small thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but reptiles or birds, like when I was younger, we used to find and save a lot of birds that had, you know, flown into stuff and my dad would feed them mushed up cat food and we try and help them learn how to fly. But that bird that flew into our house during our stream. Yeah. If that bird hadn't gotten out and he was hurt, I would have put him in a box. We've done that before I know. where I found an injured bird and I'll put him in a box. Birds, I feel like I can try and help a lizard or something. I can try and help. But like an insect, yeah, unless it was a big one, like a praying mantis or something, I'd probably be like, look, fam, if you got venom in there, I don't know if this is going to work out. (laughs) I don't think it's going to work out. Fair enough. Um, Natalie says, I assume that (laughs) I assume that Jillian still hasn't fixed the switch to the fireplace yet. (laughs) And that Jillian is really super awkward in person and tries to cover it up and just ends up acting more awkward. Well, let me uh, address the first part of this. You're right. Okay. I spent many, many hours on that fireplace and um, it ended up with me realizing that I was in over my head on like a technical standpoint. Electrical stuff. Well, like, yeah, I'm not an electrician. I thought I was like, I honestly, I was this close. The problem was I wasn't, I'm going to bore you guys now since you asked about it. I wasn't getting enough power to the Wi-Fi switcher. Uh, that as much as it needed. So basically the a normal light switch that just says on and off, it only requires a base amount of power, not that much. Um, but if you have a Wi-Fi signal in the switch, it needs more power. And I, I wasn't getting it. So I messed around with the wires. And at one point I gave too much power and it would short the, the fuse. So I got like way too high power, way too little power. And then I just f- found myself in a bind where I was like, I'm going to ruin something. So I need to just stop. So I put it on the old switch and I, I tabled that project for later. Thank you for trying, Julian. You're really sweet. Um, I am incredibly awkward in person. Um, I wouldn't say I'm like painfully awkward. Like, no. Like I think I've got, I'm pretty good at being not totally crazy in social situations. Even if I'm uncomfortable, I'm able to kind of like small talk and... <laughs> You know, make people feel comfortable, especially after, you know, we go to, we've, over the years we've been on YouTube, we've spent a lot of times doing meet and greets. And I think you get, you get a little bit better each time at like talking to people. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would still say I'm awkward. I don't know. Yeah. Well, it, it is a strange interaction when people know everything about you and you don't know anything about them. Yeah. For sure. But I wouldn't call you awkward by any means. Thanks, babe. Person. Yeah. Friend. Friend. Actually, I'm your friend. I'm going to raise your volume. Raise my volume. Well, you, not if you do that. You're not talking into the mic. That's why I'm I have to raise so your volume. I'm so sorry. So either put it close to your mouth or raise the volume. You choose. Yeah, ding, ding. No, you can move ding, it. It's on an arm. Ding, you can ding, move it. Ding, ding. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, Evie tweeted, oh. I assume that Julian blows his nose on tissues and leaves them everywhere. And oh that Jenna God. wears her leisure suit three times a week. <laughs> Uh, no. You don't even do that when you're sick. No, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. I I understand why she might assume that, though. Because well, of the paper towel issue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes when I'm in the kitchen and I'm I'm in a groove, as some artists or chefs would, would say, 
you use a paper towel quickly and then leave it somewhere. And after a while, there's a bunch of paper towels on the counter. Yeah. How did those get there? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't blow my nose and leave dishes over. That's kind of gross. No. Uh, I feel like you wouldn't put up with that. I wouldn't put up with that if no, someone did that. No, 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 Like, I can understand if someone's really sick and, like, you're laying on the couch and you have, like, a little pile of tissues going or something. Like, but it's a short-term thing. Yeah, but, like, I've never even seen you do that. Yeah. I also don't blow my nose, like, in front of people. I find that to be really uncomfortable. Like, I'll go to the bathroom to blow my nose. Or, like, you know how some people will just, like, do it really loud in front of a bunch of people <laughs> and they're fine with it and they put it in their pocket? Like, I always see that and I'm like, damn, that's, like... Okay. You're brave. Like, you know, I always yeah. need to like just be on my own. I don't I'm know. the same way. Yeah. I don't have that. What about the leisure suit three times a week? No, 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 no. It's very comfortable, but like <laughs> it needs to go in the wash. You can't just like wear it. And it's like I'll get too hot, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Like if I like to be under a blanket sometimes. So like if I'm just like wearing, I can't like have long sleeves and long pants and like be under a blanket. I'd be pretty cold. You have worked out in it though before. Oh yeah. Which is a sight to see because you were leisuring <laughs> and under out. a barbell with 135 pounds on it. And it's very confusing to see, but it's badass. No, um, I don't wear it that much. Cassie Dink. I assume Kermit cries in the middle of the night. Accurate. He cries... He cries about a lot. You guys know that. If you think of a time of day, he cries during it or night. He'll get up. Well, sometimes he won't cry right away. So like if he's really thirsty in the middle of the night, we leave water out on the ground for the dogs. He'll get up and he'll start digging at the dish, like moving it around, pushing it around the room. And if I don't get up or Julian doesn't get up, he'll just look at you and go. <laughs> yeah, he'll get onto the bed. He perches up. Like, remember that Snapchat, the one that turned into a meme? It was like when he climbs up higher, he cries yeah. louder. He does that because he finds perch points where he can. He knows you see and hear him, <laughs> and then he'll cry he'll down get above at you. you and cry yeah, down he cries down at, down at you. you. Um, so I, I wake up to him crying often. I would say more more mornings. In the morning, yeah. More mornings. Mornings different. Yeah, I wake up to him crying more mornings than I do to him not crying. Yeah, but in the middle of the night, he's not it's like only an infant child. He just does it sometimes if he's if thirsty. It's only if he's thirsty or like really has to go to the bathroom. He's been sick a couple times, or before he got diagnosed with Cushing's, he kept me up so many nights because it mm -hmm. was just so. I felt horrible for him and we couldn't figure out what was going on. Yeah. And he felt like he was hungry. He felt like he was thirsty and he would like go to the door, like he needed to go out. And I would just, you know, I would get 20 minutes of sleep and then he'd be screaming at me. But since he got diagnosed and he's on medication now for a while, there's no screaming in the middle of the night. But yeah, there was a block of time in there when I just wasn't getting any sleep and I felt so bad for him. Yeah. But now it's just if he's thirsty or has to really go potty for some reason. Or if he's bored. If we if we went to bed really late because of a stream and we're sleeping till like noon, he'll get up at like 11 and be like, fuck y'all. I'm, I'm getting you up now. <laughs> get the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Scarfy. Hi, Scarfy. I assume that you both are very much enjoying all of the content that you're putting out on your channels right now and on Twitch while two or three years ago it might have felt a bit more forced. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not, a, it's hindsight at this point. So yeah, in hindsight, I'd say I enjoy the content that we make now more. Yeah. But at the time I would have said, I make the content now. I, I like it, it n now more mm -hmm. than I did a yeah. couple of years ago. Yeah. So I think it's 2020 hindsight, but it's not that it wasn't authentic at the time or anything. And it was also, YouTube was a different landscape, you know? Yeah. And our podcast was different. Our Twitch stream was different. Everything is different. And it's a reflection of who you are now in time, you know? Yeah, I like that outlook. I think that's good. I mean, I think at any point, I neither of us have ever really made content that wasn't true to us. It was just you change as you grow up. Mm. And as uh, you also change in your lifespan online, mm -hmm. not just your life. And I feel like that's shown a lot. And I think we're at a point where... We're really lucky in a lot of ways, like with Twitch um, and the time we spend streaming, like it's become a really awesome outlet and like platform for us to capitalize our, the style of fun we like to have mm -hmm. and the content that gets made from it. And I think we're, it's like the product of a lot of things. It's not just like we prefer our content now than it was five years ago. It's like a lot of things happened for yeah. this to happen. Yeah. 
Um, so uh, shouts out Marissa. She compiled a whole bunch of these. Thank you, Marissa. And then also sent a screenshot of her assumptions about us oh, or me. Um, Candace writes, Julian tends to get up before Jen in the morning. That's true. Is that that is true. I mean, mainly because I train jujitsu in the morning. I have a hard time falling asleep at night too. You do. I'm notoriously asleep before. Always. And, every single night. And waking up before you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Grace Dobler wrote six times, y'all are fit as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Um, we try. I mean, we're. I'm by no means in the best shape I've ever been in, but we just try to... Well, I feel like we work out a lot and yeah. we get a lot of exercise and we do really good at that. But yeah, we also enjoy eating food and... And rally swigging. Yeah. <laughs> and like, obviously we could both be in better shape or have our diets, you know, cleaner, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I'm also like, I'm a 32 year old lady and I'm just having a good time. As long as I'm healthy, I'm happy. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So I wouldn't say we're fit as hell, but we do like to lift heavy weights. We like to lift Julian heavy weights. Julian does a lot of jujitsu. <clears throat> no. I do not jujitsu at all. It is not the sport for me. There was a bunch of assumptions that I didn't screenshot them, but they were like, Jenna's secretly better than Julian at jujitsu. Oh my God. <laughs> Just never trains, but is innately you. better than everyone. I can promise you I'm even worse than you've ever seen in any video. Oh, you, you'd love it. No. You literally have like a, a bump on your eye today from jujitsu. You got a little shiner. He'll come home and he'll just have like bumps and bruises all over him. Dude, it's that doesn't look like fun. It's, it's a little shiner, dude. <laughs> it's, like, it, it's a fun, it's a, it's a reminder of how much fun I had today. Oh boy. Uh, Janie writes, you both are getting sick of YouTube and would consider doing Twitch full time. I don't think that's going to happen. Not for me, at least. I'll speak for myself. Mm, yeah. I I would I would agree with you. I I I get why you would write that because mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time on Twitch. You know, at least for me, I spend much less time making YouTube videos than I once did. You know, I was once doing five days a week, and now I'm doing like one, maybe two. Um, but I think it's a reflection of not preferring one platform to the other, but deciding how you want to spend your time between two platforms, which is something that like Twitch was never that for us it was always like a side project that we treated like a side project and now we're just doing a lot more of it yeah well we started playing a lot more games and we started having a lot of fun and a lot of our friends started playing yeah the and community streaming. of people we play with has grown so much and it's yeah. really really special it's really fun but i don't think there's ever a bone in my body that's like i my end date for youtube is x or it's coming or it exists you know i don't really have that in my mind i have that in my mind just as much as i have my end date for being on the internet yeah you know yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. I still very much enjoy the platform of YouTube. And I, I mean, I, as well as anybody else that's been creating content for a while, and that can be any amount of time, yeah. you do hit tons of creative walls and sort of fatigue at different levels. And I think that's totally normal. Um, I think, you know, I, I get tired of it sometimes. I, I But Absolutely, that's with yeah. anything, yeah, you know? Yeah, 100%. You can't do something for 10 years and not have, like, your ups and downs with it. But I, I'm still very much in love with and enamored with YouTube as a platform. I just think it's fucking spectacular. I agree. And this the stuff that you can find on there and the people you can find on there, like, it is just so amazing. And for all of its downfalls and, like, not great stuff, I think it's just, like, a wonderful place for learning and sharing and there's nothing else like it and i have no intention of leaving it for anything you know 100 like percent. I, I wouldn't be like oh i'm i'm no longer on youtube i'm gonna be on twitch now yeah you know because it's just not the same type of stuff or interaction yeah that's why they they to me they either need to coexist or like i wouldn't be on the internet yeah. you know even if one ever, you know, the ratio of time you spent fluctuates, that's yeah. normal, I think. Yeah, I, I still love YouTube. I yeah. watch YouTube as as much or more than anything else. Yeah. And I, yeah. Yeah. I I think personally, like the, being able to upload videos to YouTube and have people watch them and then you also watch other people's videos is such a simple concept. But for me, it's helped me so much, mm -hmm. like discover a huge passion of mine, which is like making videos and like filming and doing stuff with cameras. I never really would have figured that out for myself had it not been for an outlet like YouTube mm -hmm. um, to where I could share it and, and interact with people who are watching it. Yeah. So I think it's, like you said, there's a lot, there's nothing perfect about it. 
but there's a lot of really special things that still exist about YouTube. And well, yeah, and a lot of some of it's getting weird, <laughs> you know, like the, the whole space is getting a little weird. Yeah. And I think that's normal when there's money to be made on any platform. Stuff starts to get a little strange. But when I sit down and watch all the plant videos that I like, like literally anything that you want to learn about is on YouTube in a way for you to understand. So you can always teach yourself. You can always pick up anything that you'd like to learn, which is one of the most powerful and amazing tools that's happened in my lifetime that I can think of. And like... When I sit down and I watch the the plant YouTubers that I really like, or you know whatever I'm super into at the uh-huh, moment, yeah. Mantis Squad, Mantis is sway back and yeah. forth. Like I think about how sometimes that person you watch a channel for a long time and you can tell they're sort of like, okay, there's only so many fucking videos I can make about plants. Yeah. And, uh, you know what should I do? What else do you want? Like, this is weird. But even when I get to those videos, I'm like, I just appreciated that you uploaded. Like, I appreciated that you shared something. And I know that you're probably tired, but like, I liked this video and and I'm glad that you, you know, did that. You know what I mean? 100%. So like, I don't think there's any part of me that would ever really get over that because the the world is always changing and there's always going to be new things to learn. Yeah. You know, and even if I'm posting something that I in my world and brain think like, well, nobody cares and nobody wants to see it. Like if you do just share, there are people that just like that, you yeah. know, they totally. just want to see it. It's like a moment of comfort or distraction or learning or whatever it is. Yeah. It's really cool. So I, I, I don't think I'd like to give that part of my life up. Yeah. I remember like five years ago, We were in Australia, and we were with part of uh, Ryan Higa's production company, RHPC, and Greg was there. We were at, like, a party, and we were hanging out with them, and I was talking to Greg um, about editing because I was just, like, starting to edit at the time, and he had already been going strong for a number of years doing the the effects and the edits for Ryan. And I was just, like, interested to talk to him about it because it was, like, talking shop, you know? And I remember he told me something that like, for me, it's just like clicked in my head. And I, we were talking about like After Effects and how he learned it. And he was literally just like, one day I decided that I was just going to sit down and teach myself mm-hmm. because of YouTube and like anything you want to learn is somewhere. Mm-hmm. And so I did it. And I, and I remember thinking like, holy shit, like it's really that simple. You, yeah. It's like up to you in this day and age, what you want to accomplish, what skills you want to, you know, learn and provide yourself and your teammates or your partners with. Um, and I I feel like that's kind of stuck with me because I've used it in a lot of ways to, to help myself. And my point is, is that YouTube is like, it's the, it's the holy Mecca for knowledge or any sort of interest or hobby you might have. Yeah. Aside from like Wikipedia or Google, but like in a video, but in format, a video form yeah. is like so much different. Mm-hmm. I mean, Very reading helpful. a manual, I would say the majority of the things that I've gone out of my way to learn how to do like a specific skill or something like that has been through YouTube, yeah. which where in the past, you know, I would have to go I don't know, find a book on it, you know, yeah. the library. Which yeah. Or even is, like a paywall. Like I remember lynda.com. You remember lynda.com? Yeah. You had to pay for the instructional videos. Exactly. That was, that was a thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, especially, yeah, no, it's cool. YouTube is cool. Yeah. And especially if you're an artistic minded person and you don't want to deal with like the business side of things. Well, that's not YouTube. That's Julian, HoneyBook. Julian, Julian. HoneyBook <laughs> is a website where you can have all-in-one business management tools provided to you. If you are the artistic person, like a graphic designer or an editor or a photographer, if you want your work to be your work and the business work to be someone else's work, HoneyBook is for you. Okay? It helps you spend more time running your business on the creative side and less time running your business on the boring paperwork business side. They basically provide all sorts of tools with calendar management, custom branded brochures for your clients, your website, your contracts, uh, even proposals. And you can have, um, you can even get e-signatures, generate invoices and get paid faster all within one online system. That is HoneyBook. And what's great is the payment is flexible. So if you use our code generally and get 50% off monthly, if you want to sign up monthly, or you get, uh, if you want to do it on an annual basis as well, that's 50% off for the first year of HoneyBook with promo code Jenna Julian. So this is not a small thing that no one uses. Over 75,000 photographers, designers, event professionals, and other solo entrepreneurs that I'm sure many of you guys are that have signed up with HoneyBook. And 
they've saved hundreds while doing it. Um, I can't tell you the first time we had any sort of help specifically with like the podcast and I wasn't having to do all the business side of things, all the contracts, all the emailing is this huge relief that I could finally just like focus my energy on the part of it that made me want to start it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So HoneyBook is really helping people do that and they can help you too. So click the link down below and get started. Use code Jen and Julian when you go to honeybook.com. That's H-O-N-E-Y-B-O-O-K.com. Really, really cool service they have. And then when you want to look your best and you don't want to go to the store, Stitch Fix is the answer for you there. Okay. If you think about maybe changing up your style and you're like, eh, I should wear more of this type of thing or I should um, dress more professional or not or less professional, more sporty, whatever. Stitch Fix is there to help you so you don't have to spend an hour in a dressing room going back and forth, getting different sizes and then leaving the mall with nothing because you're worst. so annoyed. The worst. I've been there many times. Stitch Fix allows you to go online onto stitchfix.com slash Jen and Julian and you basically answer a bunch of questions. They give you they give you sample clothing. Ooh, a style they give you, quiz. It's really cool, right? Like w- they go, would you wear this? Yes or no? And then they would say, okay, which of these two shirts would you wear? And then, okay, yeah, this one. Okay, well, what about this tie? Or you know what I mean? And so they would take you through this whole process. It's actually really nice. It's kind of fun. It feels like a game. Um, and after they collect all that data, you get assigned a personal stylist that will handpick items based on your style choices. And it's really cool because then it just arrives at your door. That's it. You don't have to go to the mall. You don't have to find parking. You don't have to try anything on. Of course, if it doesn't fit or if you're not happy with it, exchanges and returns are always free. Um, So you take what you love out of the box and you can return the rest. So you don't have to keep everything that you get in the shipment. And there's no subscription required. You can sign up to receive scheduled shipments or get your fix whenever you want. If you want it right now and then in another six months, there's a wedding you're going to or you want it then, whatever. And the styling fee for Stitch Fix is only $20, which is applied toward anything you keep in your shipment. So right now, if you go to Stitch Fix, that's S-T-I-T-C-H-F-I-X dot com slash Jenna Julian, you get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. Check it out. Super cool service. Would 10 out of 10 recommend. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. Okay, this this next one is a, is a doozy. Uh-oh. X... Miv writes, you have really quiet sex so that you don't freak out the dogs. Oh, my God. Not okay. No, 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 no. Well, since, inappropriate. since we're just friends. Inappropriate. <laughs> we are just friends. This, you've made this incredibly awkward for us, completely platonic friends. <gasps> What kind of question is this? Does, is that a question you would ask any anyone who has dogs? Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Marble. Marble, what do you think of this question? <laughs> oh, we should move on? Okay, let's move on. Um, Julian's favorite mod is Marissa, and he adopted Bush. <laughs> I would love to adopt Bush. Bush is I our son. He is our internet Bush. son. Jenna like, loves Bush. I love him so much. Well, I talk about him too with Julian, just like when we're hanging out or like go on his Twitter. Bush is like my escape from the internet. Like I'll go on Bush's Twitter, or like his YouTube to like laugh and like, you know, forget about your day or whatever mm-hmm. the hell. He just like, I fuck. No one on this planet loves Kermit as much as Bush and That's I true. love Kermit. That's true. I've, I've never met someone who loves Kermit as much as you and Delete. And saw he's Bush. just like across the world, like we just are connected via our souls and our love for that dog. <sighs> Not that I know so many of you love Kermit and you love him so much, but it's just it's like a different level. He he like knows Kermit and he's yeah. never met Kermit. I know it's 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 pretty special. Uh, my favorite mod, I don't have a favorite mod. I love all of our Twitch mods equally. The I would say, though, Marissa has been heavily involved from a very early start point on mm-hmm. Twitch um, and has stayed incredibly involved to the point where you know I would credit her with us growing a lot on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you have a good team of moderators, um, you're, you know, I would say like your, your Twitch channel is only as good as your team of moderators. Mm. So if they're good and they make good decisions and help and you and have your back, feel welcome and, and they make, make people, fe- they like, make new new viewers feel welcome and it's yeah. a safe place. I mean, it's a that's a hard job that people volunteer well, to do. Well, because you know what it's like, you know, when you sign on to Twitch and you're like, 
this is exciting. I don't know how to use this platform like any platform. And you go and people are live. So you write in the chat. You're uh-huh. like, yeah. hey, how are you? And then someone greets you and they're like, hey. And yeah, they but say like usually yeah. no one says anything back to yeah. you. And the person who's live streaming probably doesn't see it depending yeah. on how many and live like, viewers they have. Yeah, and you're, you're like, like okay, sick. What's yeah. this platform? Yeah. <laughs> you know? No, it's it's. Totally. Totally. Yeah. I have, I, I mean, I have that same like anxiety about that happening myself. If mm-hmm. I go into a chat, I'm like, no one acknowledges me or whatever. Yeah. So like, that's a big reason why we love Marissa and the rest of our team of mods. Like they're all incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. It's your fit says Julian edits Jenna's videos. <laughs> oh, not true. Not true. Not true. I'll occasionally, you know, help with a trick or two in post, but no, she edits her videos and I edit mine. I, yes. The hours and lines on my face will tell you how many hours <laughs> I've edited. I don't know if I've said this before, but she taught me Final Cut Pro. I didn't know Final Cut Pro until uh, Jenna taught me it. I was, I was very elementary. I used a little bit of Adobe in college and then a little bit of Final Cut 7 growing up because that's what my dad used. But I, like when it came to editing, I was useless. And then she taught me Final Cut Pro. So I got the royal treatment from one of the best out there in the editing uh, arena. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I'm, a, Marvel, you just I'm scared, sorry. You literally <laughs> just, it sounded like you spoke into his soul. I'm sorry. He just woke sorry, up Marvel. out of a deep I'm sorry, sleep. Marvel. I'm sorry. Marvel. Marvel, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Marble, Marble, sorry. here. Marble, have some protein. Hey. No, I wouldn't say that I'm like particularly gifted at editing, but yeah, I did. I taught you how to use it because mm-hmm. you were using something else, and I was like, "Oh my god, what are you doing? Like, just use this." And you're like, "I was using what my school made me use." It yeah, was, but I mean, you're very easy to teach in anything because you're always very willing to learn, and like, it's just easy to teach you stuff. So it didn't take you very long, obviously, because anyone that's most people have taught themselves Final yeah. Cut Pro. Yeah. Except for whatever people go into the Apple store and, you know, take those classes. I know they exist, but I'm saying most people have taught themselves how to edit. Mm -hmm. It's not outrageously complicated, but yeah. Jimmy writes, Julian with an A, uh, ramps up his Aries for the camera. (laughs) Um, Yes and no, right? Like, so... I would agree with yes and no. Yes and no. Um, Anyone who has any sort of persona or um, attitude or any sort of personality traits that are very distinguishable for their online persona or their Mm -hmm. online presence, um, I would say is amplified when the camera's on for most people, like almost all people. So like, yes, in that sense. But at the same time, um, I don't really act differently. I don't make different choices. I would say yes and no in that some of your Aries is like obviously the couple of times when you've like taken knives out of the knife block and done the floss dance with them. Like that's not stuff that you're just like doing when we're hanging out. Although a little bit like honestly you do a lot of crazy stuff when we're alone and there's no cameras on obviously you're just an Aries. But it's more of just like the spontaneous making decisions, <laughs> like being like once you get in that mood, you're like unstoppable, like out of control. <laughs> you know it's what? just different. Like I think you would do something different on camera, like cut a knife, cut an onion with a hammer, like. But now that I'm thinking about it, like you do that stuff to me constantly. I just do it more. I do it more, more condensed. scheduled. Yeah, it's like on camera in the video. Yeah. you're doing more of it in a row. Speaking of which, not this week for us, but this week for you guys, which is next week for us. Do you know what that week is? Aries season. It's fucking Aries season, bitch. <laughs> I think it's Wednesday. I think it's the twenty first. Oh God, what a day for Aries season to begin. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, that doesn't surprise anyone, right? What? <laughs> All right. Um, Cassidy writes, Jenna will profusely apologize for anything if she's wrong. Julian will take it to the grave. Wait, so does that mean I don't apologize? I guess so. <laughs> I apologize, but when you, when you like make an honest mistake, like you say someone's name wrong or something where it's completely honest and uh, accidental – you will profusely apologize because yeah. you're like so mortified at the idea of offending anyone. Yeah. Well, not that. Like I, I would just would never want to hurt someone's feelings yeah. by being dumb. Exactly. Or, like or ignorant it. or coming off any way like yeah. that. Yeah. So 
that profuse apology yes. is true in that sense. If but. if I re- if I don't think that I'm wrong though, I will stand my ground. <laughs> I can conf- I can confirm that a thousand percent. Julian does a really good job apologizing though, but sometimes it does take you a minute to like get there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you would rather argue for a little bit and then get there and then apologize. Like you got to be sure that you're wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I think but you do do a really good job apologizing. I think that comes from thinking my decision making is pretty sharp. So when <laughs> I, so like, when I'm faced here's with all the reasons why so, it wasn't. So when I'm faced with the reality or the, the or the systematic Jenna breakdown of why it's not, it takes me a second. And it's not about like checking an ego or anything because I don't really I'm not a very egotistical person at all. I just think that I and I'm not like I'm right all the time either. I just I know myself well and I know my the way I operate well and I feel like sometimes I'm like wait where where in the in this in the process did I go wrong here? Like what's what choice did I make that was like totally fucked this up? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And sometimes I'm like didn't even realize that. Cuz even I can't keep up with my Aries sometimes. Well, Julian's also done a good job learning that if I start to tell him that he was wrong, that you have two paths right now. You can argue with me for about 20 minutes or you can just admit that you're wrong. <laughs> well, because I'll say one thing about me. I'm not going to like pick an argument unless I know that I'm right. You know <laughs> what I mean? Also confirm that. If, if there's any chance that I'm going to lose this argument, I'm just not going to go down that path. Yeah. Like, well, the, in general, you don't lose arguments, so... But like I, the, I, there's, I can totally be wrong and I can totally like, but you not would know abandon it. and you would be like, I'm not yeah, going to pursue But there's this. plenty, think of all the times when I think that I know that I'm right. And then you're like, actually you're an idiot. And I'm like, oh <laughs> fuck. But Few I wouldn't. Few and far between, I'd say. I wouldn't like. It's like a solar eclipse. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go out of my way to like really stand my ground unless I really thought that I was right. So I, obviously there's total chances that I'm completely wrong. But usually when it's like we're arguing about something within our household and within our relationship, I'm like not going to pick a fight with you unless it's like, Julian, there's 30 paper towels on the counter. Can you please throw them out? <laughs> if you were like, but babe, I'm using all of them. I'm like, this is when you need to stop and just throw them the fuck <laughs> out. Uh, but yeah, if I if I make a mistake, I will profusely apologize. But Julian does do a very good job apologizing when he is wrong, when he gets there. The prosecution would like to prevent, present evidence, pulls out 30 paper towels. <laughs> <laughs> Guilty. Uh, okay. Not as funny. Foul Power says, you cheat on veganism sometimes. No, 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 no. Never. That's not I think, okay. well, when I, uh, I started being a vegan a long time ago, like 10 plus years ago. And that was, I was not ethically vegan. I was just doing it for health reasons. And I would have a cheat meal every Sunday. And to me, cheat meal meant I'm going to eat meat and dairy, which is fine. There's people that do that. And I still think that you can make an impact from eating less animal products if that's how you approach it. But at this point in our life and you know, when I finally went full vegan, what, four something years ago now, that I don't see it as cheat food, you know, like I, I just don't, I don't want to eat animal products. So that's not something that I would <clears throat> eat, if that makes sense. I miss like the way that the cheese is good, <laughs> you know, like sometimes it's hard to find a product or something that you want to make that like gives you that same sensation, but I certainly don't see it as cheating. Because it's just, it's not something that I, I want to eat. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, in, in the most respectful way possible, when someone says to me, like, how long you, like, how long are you going to do this vegan thing for? Or like, what, you know, what's this about? Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Where the question is sort of framing it as just like a fad diet or whatever. Um, I, I never really take that personally. I just, now that I have a chance to answer that question, I am as ethically driven as I feel like a vegan could be. And I didn't start out like that. And I don't talk about it a lot because it's, it's for me. You know what I mean? It's like my, it's, it's my decision making and the way, you know, I view things. But when I started out, Jenna helped me kind of transition because I was getting a lot of, I was, I was getting sick a lot, you know, eating meat and she helped me kind of learn the plant-based diet. And it was very quick that I adapted it and I was like, okay, I want to do this. Now I'm on the complete other side of it where I've been doing it for a few years and I'm cheating on the diet isn't really an option for me. It's like, I don't know how, I don't know. I'm trying to compare it to something, but it's like, 
it's it's a choice that I've made. So it's like there's no negotiating that choice because I've already made it. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've already stood my ground very strongly in, the, in making that choice. And I think about things a lot when it comes to the choice that I make to be vegan. So it never crosses my mind, similar to similar but not similar to how it doesn't cross my mind to cheat on being gluten-free. It's like yeah, the repercussions. Can. Yeah, those are more physical repercussions, but I, I would never, yeah, I would never like cheat on a vegan diet for any reason. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all it took for me was just watching some of that sad stuff and it's not, it's not food anymore for me. So yeah. it's not, it's not a matter of cheating. There's no part of me that like wants to eat dairy cheese or wants to eat meat. So yeah. no, we don't, we don't cheat on our vegan diet. Um, Nayeli Espinosa says, you guys genuinely love the Dink fam. That's true. We've met so many of you. <laughs> And y'all are fucking funny as hell. Y'all are funny as hell. Uh, you know, I would, again, bringing it back to Twitch, I would credit Twitch with a lot of these feelings I have and the for podcast. the Dig Fam and the podcast, of course. Yeah. Um, and we've been at this for so long. But I would credit like this sort of forum and Twitch where we're directly interacting with you. Twitch is more instant, right? Because we're seeing chat as we're, mm-hmm. as we're live. But this is very similar too because we read the comments every week on the podcast. But man, like, it's something that you don't expect, like to feel so much love for the people who support you and watch you. Yeah. You always like, at least starting out, I always thought like I would, I would appreciate them X amount and that would just be it. But like you guys have grown so much on me as people and as a group of people who choose to interact with me all the time and when you don't have it's to. not all the time that you interact with them. It's like there, I think that it's a group of people that actually sort of, know you better than well for me personally that you know the people that follow the podcast and that follow our twitch stream know me better or have a better understanding of me as a person than people did you know years ago when i was just making my main channel youtube videos which feels really liberating for me because it it brings you closer to them but it also feels really accepted you know because they support you they love you and they show you that and you know they're there to laugh and joke around but like i i feel much more comfortable being you know my everyday daily self and we can go and play video games or we can sit here and have a conversation without the burden of it being out, outrageously entertaining and people are still enjoying that because they enjoy you as a person so yeah. that i think that for me having that response from people and then getting to know them, a lot of them by name, a lot of them meeting them and not just by their usernames. I'm saying like their names. Y'all's real names. Yeah. It's, it's just been really cool. And we follow a lot of you and getting to know your lives is really fucking funny. (laughs) We do. We follow a lot of you guys, but similar to how you, you know, enter a new community and you really, really hope it's a safe space for you to interact with people and to, Um, talk to a creator or have any sort of presence there. You know, you hope it's a safe space. Mm -hmm. I am the same way with you guys. I feel so lucky that you provide us a safe space, not just other people, but like you give us the sense of like comfort and, you know, you have our backs and if we're not feeling well, you wish us well, or you're not putting pressure on us to do, to stream or whatever, you know what I mean? Like I feel a huge, huge amount of love and safety from you guys because of how you act and how you are so genuine and how they treat each other though and like when people come into our twitch stream and they say we have a really nice audience and how so many of you guys are friends with each other and have met through that like it's there's there's a lot there to love and be hard not to love so i'd say yeah we absolutely love yeah we fucking love you guys man (laughs) shit all right JMK says, I assume Jenna does not actually have a basketball game tomorrow. <gasps> How dare you? How dare you? It's tomorrow. It's not tomorrow. We actually tossed around the idea of going to film a, a basketball highlights video. Obviously, because my game is tomorrow. So I would just film me practicing. Yeah. So it's tomorrow, guys. Don't worry. 9 a.m. Yeah, it's tomorrow. Um, Becca wrote, well, actually, see, this is a username I know. Her name's Rest in Pugs, but I know her as Becca because she's been around for so mm-hmm. long. And yeah. she wrote a similar question. The Dig fan became a bigger part of your lives than you ever expected it to. Pretty much answered yeah. that. But yes, correct, it did. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Julian learned in his 20s not to put silverware in the microwave. <laughs> 
you want. Is it true? Come on. I learned it in my teens. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, though, you put out a fire in your kitchen for your mom when you were like 10. So even if you had done something like that, you would at least know how to put the fire out. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> have I told that story? I probably have. Yeah, you have. Yeah. Yeah. Don't buy teapots with rubber handles <laughs> unless you have a son who is a firefighter who's 12. <laughs> You're part of the Illuminati probably, Alicia says. No, beats. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think they would let anyone with, a, like, a YouTube channel have any access to any kind of shit, like... I'm a, Absolutely not. I'm going to be in the Illuminati. The Illuminati merch is down below. <laughs> They'd probably let Shane in first before anyone so they yeah. can get him on their side. It's a good business move. <laughs> For them. For them. No. Yeah. Y'all are really Fortnite players in your spare time, MUA Jordan says. Oh, my God. No, Listen, no, Jordan. No, 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 no. Every hour that I am not streaming on Twitch... I am playing Fortnite on my computer and not telling anyone about it every single hour. <laughs> no, remember that one on person mobile. came into chat that, w that we were playing PUBG and they were like, do you guys play Fortnite? And we were like, no. And then they were like, we know you guys play Fortnite. It's <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, no. got us. Nothing against Fortnite. No, but like yeah. we recently tried it out. It was a lot of fun oh, to play we every once in a while. Laughing. Yeah. Cause there's every like, once in a while it's really fun. Yeah. yeah. Fuck ton of content there. It's pretty great. Um, if Julian wasn't with Jenna, he wouldn't be vegan. Natalie Hewitt says, uh, yes and no. Yes, because she introduced me to it. So I credit her for that. Mm. And I wouldn't have found it like I did if I was, if I was not with you. But speaking now, if we were not together now, I would still be vegan. hundred percent. But let's stay together as friends. Oh, I love being friends. Okay. <laughs> Being friends with you is the best. Faith Nickerson says, uh, you rarely disagree on what you want to eat. Uh, well, Julian only wants pad thai. So Only only on nights uh, where the day of the weekend's in Hawaii, though. <laughs> we can usually come up with something that we'll both eat. Like, we'll both be fine. It's not like we have tons of choices if we wanted to like order we have like the same go-to recipes and we're usually yeah. sort of in the same mood like we have a little bit of a weekly schedule of food so yeah, yeah i would say that's true yeah I also we think do rarely disagree but yeah. like on cheat day if i'm like and by cheat day i mean we don't eat meat yeah dairy. cheat day is just where we have like our french fries and yeah. our bad food but. so i'll usually want um carl's jr has the the um, beyond burger beyond burger yeah. that is just so good I and i'll that. order just just uh, pad, thai, pad noodles. thai noodles. All of it. Just fucking That's so That's like much. one of the only nights of the week, though, Sunday nights, though, is when we're eating separately. Separately, yeah. Because yeah. it's like, this is one night a week where you eat. Yeah, it's like you're, bad you're food. one good food, and I'm like, I don't want pad thai. Yeah, but I also feel like you and I have developed a good barometer of when the other person needs their favorite food. Yeah. So, for like, sure. when, I, when I can tell you need pasta, I need Italian we make food. pasta. And then, likewise, for yeah. like Thai food or, mm -hmm. you know, Asian food. Uh, Zara says, you guys don't like to go out and party. You much prefer to stay home. <sighs> How could you tell? <laughs> At this point in my life, yes. Yeah. There was a time when I really enjoyed going out a lot, but it's not that fun for me anymore. Yeah. I never really was into it. I, I he really, really wasn't. I really only went out because you wanted to go I out. I would drag his ass <laughs> out. I was like, we're <laughs> going out. <laughs> And I would put on my super high shoes, walk around, and just have a good time. That's, I thought that was fun, you know, yeah, to go I mean, out I, and drink at a bar and go dancing or whatever. We had a lot of fun. It wasn't something I would have chose to do, but, like, we had a lot of fun. But now if we if we do go out or we have something to go to, like, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. And then we won't stay very long and we'll come home. Yeah. And then that'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it, I, I don't know. It's kind of nice. But yeah. We... I think the most trouble we get into is we'll drink and game on a Saturday night, but we're still with all of our friends and a lot of you guys watching live, yeah, enjoying ourselves. So mm -hmm. it's like we're at a bar. We just know everybody at the bar and we're also in our house. Yeah. But it's still very social. It is. is. Yeah. Uh, Pedro, Julian loves locking the dogs in that weird wine room thingy. <laughs> no, no. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we almost literally never do that. There's when I, we usually walk, lock them in the game room if there's like someone's coming in the house or like, you know, there's occasions when that happens when you need the dogs to not be able to walk out the front door. We'll put them in the um, game room where there's like a big chair and they all have beds and stuff to sit in. We wouldn't put them in the wine. Yeah. That's where I go when, when stream puts me in timeout. <laughs> if I ever do something wrong on stream, they put me That's in timeout. That's a joke though. And they, and they put me in the wine room to lay down and think about what That's I did. That's a joke. 24-hour locked in the wine room challenge. Isn't there a bathroom one of those going around? Yeah. What the hell? I don't know, man. I haven't really watched any of them. <laughs> what? I'm like, okay. So you just like, you poop and then you smell your poop all day? And then you eat with your poop. <laughs> God. Yeah, I don't know. I would eat in the shower with the water on. That sounds nice. I would make pasta in the shower. Okay. Ronka Rousey says... Your sleep schedule is whack and not really a schedule at all. Well, honestly, I think this goes for everyone on the internet. You have a sleep schedule or a schedule in general that involves your sleep. And over time, something is just like slapping away at it. So it gets less and less yeah. and less until it doesn't exist. They're called internet hours. Yeah. It's, it's a phenomena that happens amongst all people. All people on the internet. Either, yeah. either it's a, a game we're playing or it's a video we're trying to make or it's a bunch of things. So, somehow it always just yeah. disappears and then you have to rebuild it. Right now we're in a good spot though. Yeah. Over time as you get better at it and you need to like actually put your foot down and like demand of your body that you're going to do this yeah. and not fuck around and stay up all night. Like, yeah, you fix it, but it does take some effort. I think it's because you have all the, you're so free, you know, like yeah. you can work whenever you want. So yeah. sleep in and like kick it. It's like very liberating because as younger people, we all wake up at the ass crack of dawn to go to school every day and to sleep in is just like a dream come true, uh -huh. you know? So when you finally have the ability to do that, of course, you're going to let some time go by where you get to stay up late and sleep in. But then you realize, wow, this really isn't that good for me or my body or my mental anything. Yeah. So you fix it back. Totally. So, yeah, we are in a good place. But we do stay up late and we do, we don't wake up at like, you know, the crack of dawn. Yeah, we don't wake up at 6 a.m. I wake up at like 8.30 most days. I'll probably wake up at 9 or 9.30. Yeah. <laughs> Marissa's assumptions about Julian. Ready for this? I'm ready. I'm 15 minutes late to everything. That's not true. It's not true. <gasps> Julian's I'm, I'm, early or early at the latest. I'm never tardy. I don't. Never. I mean, I would say like, I think she's saying that because like I'm always late for stream and yeah. like stream, I'll, I'm notoriously late for like, we'll say it's seven, it's 7.30. Yeah, it's 7.30, yeah, yeah. it's eight. But as far as in person, like if I have a, if I have a lunch meeting, He's if I have early. any meeting, yeah. I'm, if I, especially if it's across town, I'm going to leave embarrassingly early just in yeah. case there's a terrible traffic jam and I, I still have time to get there. Cause I, always. I, I hate being late. I fucking hate being late. Yeah, he's never late. And I get annoyed when other but people. But with stream, are late. sometimes we might be late for stream because the dogs are fighting and won't finish their yeah, dinner. Stream is different. <laughs> I would admit I'm normally late to stream, but other things, um, yeah, I, I like can't allow myself to be late too. You like to wear. What? Damn, roasted. You like to wear clothes that are one size smaller than you should wear. Who is that too? Me. <gasps> Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? When did that? Wait, Kermit, no, no, no. Get away from the keyboard and the mixer. My God. He's okay. our audio engineer. Oh, he's not. He's going to drool on the fucking Apollo and short it. My nasty boy. Is this shirt too tight, Marissa? I don't. This is a large. No. Am I an XL person? No, no, Should no, I switch no. to XL? I mean, you wear whatever you want, but I don't think your clothes are too small. Julie. Um... Maybe I should look into XL. We'll just we'll test it out. Okay, t take a bunch of pictures and you send them to Marissa. We'll I'll, try on clothes for her. I just okay. We use Stitch Fix. <laughs> Stitch Fix will get you whatever clothes you want at the size that you should be wearing. Unlike me, check it out. Damn, roasted yourself. You're very routine oriented, but don't want to admit it. I am. I l love and crave routine. You are, you are a, a creature of habit. I feel like I have a routine too, though. I force you to make a schedule and tell me everything that you're doing. That but like week. within within Julian things, I have a routine. I don't know what the fuck it is, but okay. 
but I do. (laughs) That's all that matters. Like that I understand my routine. No no one else. It's like, it's like hieroglyphs. No one should be able to read or understand my routine as long as I can understand. Oh, sick. Yeah. No tight. That's the Aries code. (laughs) My like week is always the same. Everything needs to be the same for me. And if something new is going to come in, I need to like mentally prepare myself for it and like decide whether or not I can do it (laughs) mentally, physically, or emotionally. And if there's any change to it, I don't like it, you know, Yeah. unless I have enough time to prepare for that. But like, even, you know, when we take on new stuff, like I need to decide whether or not I can fit it in. And if I can, then I commit to it until forever forever literally until someone else stops it exactly but that's why i I won't like add something new in unless i'm like yes i commit to doing this until forever yeah otherwise i need to reevaluate this fitting in this place or this or whatever yeah so my schedule is always pretty much the same and i do like routine i like routine too but like my own routine yeah i know your routine but you sometimes but gets a little wild you've trained me to make that legible to other people mm-hmm. well because he'll just do this thing where he's like yeah i'm gonna go do this and then i'm gonna go do that and then i'm gonna do this and i'm like how did you just add seven things into the day like what the hell it's carpe diem you know <laughs> just like gotta do it <laughs> lastly you don't actually know how to tie your shoes i do know how to tie my shoes but lowercase b comma I often pre-tie my shoes and then slip on my shoes. So like all my Adidas, like my Ultra Boost, I don't tie those shoes because they're already tied. I don't re-tie them. I like really tightly double knot them and then just slip them on and off. So now they're like slip-on shoes. Um, With my uh, Converse, I prefer them untied. Mm -hmm. I like to walk around with them untied. That's wild. No, it's not. I think it, it provides more freedom. Oh boy, here we go. And it has a different look. If you tie up your Converse or your Vans or what, what did I say Converse? I meant oh. Vans. If you tie up your Vans or Converse or any sneaker like that, you look really straight laced and like, I'm not about that. I'm just chilling. Oh, you're, you, you're, you're not a regular dad. You're a cool dad. I'm a cool dad. Oh. My laces are untied. You should just get some Crocs. I have Crocs. No, I don't. Currently, I don't. I have Crocs. I just got the those boots that you have. Because you really were like jealous them. of mine. Yeah, I got her gardening boots. really like them. Or like, not gardening boots, whatever. They're just shoes. All right, well, there it is. Those are your assumptions about us. So I will say those were all, for the most part, very kind. So thanks for that, y'all. To the people we chose, thank you. <laughs> there were some that... W- tell were- me what... You were saying, like, I was like, are all of them, like, are any of them, like, real nasty? Some of them were just, like, shots at us. Like what? Like, someone was just like, y'all are rich, and you enjoy being rich. Oh, shit. It's like, okay. Oh, shit. I don't know what kind of discussion you want us to have about this tweet, but... It's exactly, this is the discussion. <laughs> just, like, us looking at each other. I don't know. But there was a, a couple where, like, um, Julian is just like ch- calling me childish and like that kind of thing. Mm. But like, I guess that's kind of a meme, so that's fine. And I deserve it probably. But you're a wonderful friend. You're, I would want you to be there with me alongside me as a friend only through anything thick and thin, but as a friend and we have to sleep in separate beds cause we're friends. Yeah. Like I love Lucy. We sleep in two twin beds next to each other. Except we're friends, though. Mm-hmm. I don't love Lucy. I'm friends with Lucy. Oh, okay. I get it. Cool. Mm-hmm. So we'll put a divider between the beds? Yeah, don't look at me. Okay. I'm friends with you, but also just, like, turn around. Okay. All right. I'm In sorry. general. Okay. Got all right. It. Can we all... How about we all agree that we're um, we're going to put the friends joke in the friend zone and just keep it there? Well, after you just said friends 30 times, you've only made it stronger. You have to get it out of your system. <laughs> Otherwise, it's just going to keep popping you have up. To, you I've, have to kill I've, the joke? I've, yes, I purge it from my oh. system. It's gone. Okay, friend. No, it's gone. You can't do that anymore. Okay, friend. Hey, lover. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> ah! Sweet pie. Sweetie okay, that's pie. Fine. Sweet pea. Sweetie pea. Sweetie pea is fine. Sweetie pea. Yeah, that's fine. Hey, lover, a.k.a. sweetie pea, a.k.a. Jenna. <laughs> <laughs> lover is such a weird, like... Oh, that's, I don't know what makes you feel weird. Hola, lover. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, we're just going to go do lover things, like eat dinner together while we look at each other and hold hands with both hands. So we just eat with our mouths like dogs <laughs> out of the bowl. <laughs> what movie was that where she's like, can we eat Imagine. while we hold hands? And then he's like trying to eat with his left hand. What, what was that? Uh, isn't that that Brent, Ben Stiller movie? What is that one? I can't remember the oh, name Oh, on Came it. Polly? No, they just get married and then they go to meet the fuckers meet the parents no they go on their honeymoon oh and he gets cucked wait yeah he does <laughs> <laughs> that's a long came folly that's the beginning of a long came long came polly yeah no ah, that's the one where jennifer aniston is in it and she has a ferret yeah but the reason he's heartbroken and falls into her arms is because he was heartbroken and cucked on vacation i think i don't think that's right that's i think i'm right i'm thinking of i think i'm right I think I'm right. That's not it. Ben Stiller goes on vacation and the girl he's with cheats on him with the guy who runs the boat, right? On that boat. Isn't that who? That's Long Came Folly. Is it really? No, that's not it. That's not the one I'm thinking Am of. Am I wrong here? I thought that was. A Long Came Polly is the one where she has a ferret. I know. She, yeah, she... That's Jennifer Aniston. No, Selma Blair or something is, is the other But there are two star. girls. There are two yeah. girls. No, no. We're thinking of different there are two girls in Long King Polly. I don't Polly. even think Ben Stiller's in a Long Well, King that's Polly. a big that. What? Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> ben Stiller is in a Long King Polly. I don't know that. Is he? Oh, he is. Okay, you're right. Read the, read the, the, the synopsis. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> read it. It's not the movie I'm thinking There's of. There's a whole first half of the movie that you're think that you're missing. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of a different movie. It's a Long King Polly. No, it is. I'm sure everyone is just screaming the right name of the movie right now. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, man. Wait, why are we talking about this again? Oh, because they're holding hands while they're eating? <laughs> Wait, are you talking about Forgetting Sarah Marshall? No. Because that's not Ben Stiller. No. I guess I don't know. It better not be a <laughs> Can we just, can we make a bet right now? If I'm right, what do I get? <laughs> All right, everyone, just F's in chat for Jenna because I'm right here. There's no way it's not a long game, Polly. There's no way it's not a long game, Polly. I, I don't know. No, it's the Heartbreak Kid. That's the one I'm thinking of. It's not a long game, Polly. I've never seen it. Are you sure? The Heartbreak Kid? Yeah, this was the movie poster. Never seen it. It's that, that girl. It was her name, Malin Ackerman. Fuck, I was wrong. Yeah, she's like, I like when we hold hands when we eat. So she holds hands with him. <laughs> I'm just trying to eat. So she's like eating with her right hand. And he's like trying to eat with his left hand or whatever. And he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> we're, not e- we're not even just doing we're gonna that. We're going to hold both hands <laughs> and just like scarf it down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Picks to follow, promise. Damn, I thought I was right on that one. No, 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 no. Uh, back to the drawing board, I guess. You guys just have to be involved, huh? They like know when the podcast is over and they start just like climbing. They also know when the stream's over. They know our schedule better than we do. Yeah. Dogs have very strong body clocks. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with us and listening to the podcast this week. We will be back next week for another one and we'll be on stream all week long. Happy airy season this week. Hope you guys are getting your tornadoes going, spinning fast. Um, but we appreciate you and thank you for sending in your uh, assumptions yeah we appreciate the help Um, you guys have a good week bye bye